One of the things that I that I remember vividly are the flavor of mangoes when I lived in uh, in Egypt. So I was a 10, 10 to 12 years old. Yeah, it's a wonderful thing with, with food and memories. And even the perception of this epitome of flavor is so dictated by what we had growing up. It's really fascinating. I grew up in Norway. You always had a very direct link to nature. You know, I used to um, have a cherry tree in my garden um, and I used to love climbing up in the tree, just sitting there eating the cherries. And then from the next year, it was my responsibility to climb in the tree and pick the cherries. My parents, they always said, there's three ways of paying. You either pay with time, you pay with money, or you pay with quality. So there's only one of them that I'm not willing to sacrifice. Quality in what I want. Because I know that if you don't have a good beginning, you won't have a good result. But yeah, it's, it's, I have many of these flavor memories, and, and I, which I like, cherish a lot. なんですけれども、それに対しては非常にあの影響を受けています。やはり日本人だからこそもできることかなと思っています。やはりその日本茶って昔からある伝統的なものをさらに進化させて、まあお酒にも合わせてますけれども、あとはまあ自分が海外に
uh, stripping down the things that we understand that makes a cocktail and building from ground up. And sometimes it could mean just taking something as a classic and putting a small little twist on it. It's always very nice to have different approaches in a menu. And it's very important to ask where the guest's understanding of that concept is. And something that I like to do is add some familiar ingredients that they might be able to latch on with the cocktail instead of making it entirely uh, a list of uh, ingredients that the guest might not understand. At some point, as a bartender, you need to make a decision. What is more important to you? Is it the recipe or is it the flavor? For me, it's not really important what's going in the drink, and the drinks don't have to have a formula. I had a complete break from the all the rules. The nani ga daiji ka to yu to, yakari sono recipe yori mo sono tsukuru ga ga doita mono o kyaku sama ni teikyo shitai ka, doita mono kanji te moraitai ka. Ma soko ga hijo ni juyo ni natte, soko ga ato kara recipe to natte tsuite kuru to omote. There's this kind of urban myth now amongst bartenders that you have to have all of the fancy toys to be able to make delicious cocktails. I think that's very wrong. For bartenders in general in the industry, is sometimes the goal is to use a rotavap or to use a centrifuge. It can be a sign of where you are in your career. I remember when my team and I started in a bar in London and we were all new to this technology. We all wanted to do the most weird things. Like I did very stupid things due to, yeah, like fish, a salmon roe vodka. It was terrible. There are different ways of achieving what you want, but you as a bartender need to understand when is the right time to use what technique. So if you want to get something specific out of an ingredient, you can't just copy-paste the technique when you work with it. Let's say, for example, I was making a drink with lovage, which is one of my favorite ingredients, but it's a very complex ingredient because it has these very fresh, vibrant green notes that was the ones that I wanted to access. But it also has this very heavy, kind of walnutty, celery, celeriac kind of bottom notes that I didn't want to have. So I needed to find a way to capture only that little part. And for that, it actually turned out that distilling was the right way to go because we tried to ferment it, we tried to make infusions, we tried to make extractions, but it just didn't work. When you work with in fresh ingredients, it's important to understand that different techniques serve different purposes. Ma so naka de no technology, so go ni tsukau no a so no aji no tsukuri kata da tari, mise kata da tari, ma i don't na so no atarashi technology to aru to go imas. So lo umaku, eh, mukashi kara no yari kata to ima no mono a wase te ku, ma so go ga hijou ni juyo kana to mo te mas. Technology da ke ni tayori sugi chau to, ya kai so re te no a naka naka ningen mi, so no ata taka mi te no a na ku nat te shima an janai ka. やはり自分たちの気持ちをそこに入れていかないといけないので、やはり自分の手からここにサーブされる、まあそこが非常に大事になってくると思います。So I think the future of flavor is to break barriers and to forget everything you know and try to start fresh. I still haven't done it, but this is like my future goal. Can you make a drink using only one ingredient in different ways? I think this is the ultimate like ingredient indulgence. まあそういったものをあのたくさんの方に飲んでいただくことによって、その日本のお茶の文化っていうのがある意味後世まで継がれる。As a bartender, the more that you can educate yourself, the more that you can take informed decisions. And 
I think that bartenders have the ability to influence consumers far more than, than they realize. There's always an opportunity to learn more. I think that's the most important thing. And there's so many collaborations across hospitality now that would have never been possible 20 years ago because you had to be specialized and you had to do your own thing and not share that knowledge with anyone else. There is this really powerful opportunity for a transfer of knowledge and skills. Enter into this with a spirit of wanting to learn and the opportunities are endless.